In this unit, we look at another method for yielding alcohol products by doing reduction reactions with aldehydes and ketones. Let's go ahead and take a look at this reaction. So we'll start with an aldehyde or ketone starting material, which I'm going to abbreviate by using R groups here, where I'll define the R groups R and R prime as either hydrogens or carbon because that's what's going to allow this molecule to meet the definition of an aldehyde or ketone. So in other words, we don't have any heteroatoms directly bonded here. We just have carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds to make this an aldehyde or a ketone there with the R groups that are present. What we will do is treat this with a reducing agent in order to reduce that carbon-oxygen double bond to a carbon-oxygen single bond. So we're going to use a reducing agent here. And the purpose of the reducing agent is it's going to allow us to reduce the carbon-oxygen double bond here to a carbon-oxygen single bond. And once we make that a carbon-oxygen single bond, we're going to be prone to having an alcohol as our product. So our final product of treating our carbonyl group compound with a reducing agent is going to be that we've created a new carbon-hydrogen bond here by adding a hydrogen to that carbonyl carbon that we see as the newly added hydrogen in red there, allowing us to yield an alcohol product. So when we think about a carbonyl containing compound relative to an alcohol, such as an aldehyde or ketone we see here, compared to an alcohol, we would describe the aldehyde or ketone as being a more oxidized molecule. The reason it's more oxidized is it has more bonds between carbon and an electronegative atom that is oxygen. So there's more bonds between C and H. I mean C and X. X is an atom with equal or greater electronegativity than carbon. And corresponding to that increase in the number of bonds between carbon and an atom such as another carbon or an oxygen, is going to have to be a decrease in the number of bonds between carbon and hydrogen. On the other hand, when we go with a more reduced molecule, the opposite will be true. A more reduced molecule will feature a lower number of carbon bonds to oxygen, carbon, or some other atom that's equal to or greater than uh, carbon and electronegativity, and it will correspond then to an increase in the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds in order for this molecule to be considered to be more highly reduced. So to reduce a carbonyl group to a hydroxy group for these aldides or ketones, what reagents can we use? So in other words, what can we use as our reducing agent to allow us to reduce the aldehyde or ketone group to an alcohol group? So reducing agents to convert aldehyde or ketones to alcohols. The three choices of reducing agents that we will typically focus on here are, first off, hydrogen with a metal catalyst, H2, with, for instance, platinum, palladium, any other metal catalyst, to provide a surface or a substrate for the reaction to take place on. You will also recall that H2 and metal catalyst is also suitable for reducing carbon-carbon double bonds and carbon-carbon triple bonds. So it also reduces alkenes and alkynes. And this can be a benefit or a pitfall because if your goal is to reduce the carbon-carbon double bonds and triple bonds in the molecule as well as the carbonyl group, of the aldehyde or ketone, this is going to be a good way to kill multiple birds with one stone. By using excess H2 and metal catalyst, you'll be able to reduce all of the aldehyde or ketone carbonyl groups, as well as the carbon-carbon double bonds and carbon-carbon triple bonds. If your goal, on the other hand, though, is just to reduce the aldehyde or ketone group and leave alone the carbon-carbon pi bonds, then you need to choose some other option. And those other options that we have available on the table are going to be use of sodium borohydride, NaBH4, which is a common reducing agent. We used NaBH4 
for the oxymercuration reduction reaction of alkenes. We used it for the reduction part because it is a reducing agent. Another option, in addition to sodium borohydride, is lithium aluminum hydride, LiAlH4. And these two molecules behave similarly in terms of the mechanism they will use to reduce carbonyl groups to alcohol groups. What we'll find is that the lithium aluminum hydride is a stronger reducing agent, so we will eventually find that it can reduce some functional groups that sodium borohydride cannot, but both of these are suitable for converting aldehydes or ketones into alcohols. One possible advantage or disadvantage, depending on how you look at it, is both of these molecules, the lithium aluminum hydride and the sodium borohydride, will not reduce carbon-carbon triple bonds and carbon-carbon double bonds. So we would say these are selective for aldehydes and ketones. They do not reduce carbon-carbon double bonds of alkenes and carbon-carbon triple bonds of alkynes. So if your goal is to take a molecule's multiple functional groups and only reduce the carbon-carbon uh, carbon oxygen double bond and not the carbon-carbon double bond, you want to use one of these two, the sodium borohydride or the lithium aluminum hydride. Let's take a look at the mechanism for the reaction of sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride with an aldehyde or ketone to see how these molecules work to enable bringing in hydrogen atoms and converting um, the carbonyl group into an alcohol group. So let's go ahead and get started with that. We'll do an example problem here looking at sodium borohydride as our, as our exemplar. So in this problem we're taking our three carbon aldehyde reacting with sodium borohydride and methanol. And let's go ahead and try to figure out what's happening here. So first off, we need to know a little bit more about the structure of sodium borohydride. It is going to have the sodium as a cation, much like what we've seen a lot of times before, the metal is just playing an observatory role as a spectator ion. It's going to be the borohydride portion of the molecule, the BH4, that is doing the work here. So we refer to this as sodium borohydride, and our boron here, is going to have a negative formal charge. And looking at this, we use the term borohydride to describe this. The term hydride implies that the hydrogen has possession of the electrons from that covalent bond because a hydride refers to a hydrogen with a lone pair of electrons and a negative formal charge. And that's in essence what this is behaving like here. So the boron hydrogen bond the electrons from that bond are going to primarily be in possession of the hydrogen or the hydride. And so we can think of that hydrogen as being highly nucleophilic because it has the possession of the electrons from that boron hydrogen bond. So what will happen is that the electrons from that bond connecting boron and hydrogen are going to come over along with the hydrogen at its side to attack the carbonyl carbon because the carbonyl carbon as we've seen before is pretty electrophilic. So the nucleophilic hydrogen attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon that forces the pi electrons up onto the oxygen. So so far this is looking a lot like the reaction of a Grignard reagent or other organometallic with a carbonyl group except that rather than using a carbon as our nucleophile we're using this green hydrogen as our nucleophile. Let's go ahead and draw out the product intermediate that would result from what we've just shown here. So I have a lone pair of electron, extra lone pair of electrons on our oxygen, giving us a negative formal charge there. Hydrogen here, and then coming on over, we have a CH2 and CH3. And then in blue, I'm going to put our newly formed carbon hydrogen bond and attach that hydrogen to there in green. So we have our new carbon hydrogen bond and we've shown that we have been able to use this borohydride in order to reduce the carbonyl group to a carbon-oxygen single bond here. In addition to our organic intermediate resulting from this step, we would also be left with BH3 as a result of this reaction step. So you have BH3. And for the record, this BH3 is able to donate up to three more hydrides 
two carbonyl groups. So in other words, if we're thinking about the stoichiometry of this reaction, you only require one mole of borohydride per four moles of aldehyde or ketone because of the fact that each borohydride can donate four units of hydride because we can donate all of these as hydrides to the molecule. Okay, so then at the next step, we've done the reduction. Now what that oxygen anion is going to be doing is looking around for a source of proton to grab. Remember that a proton is going to be a hydrogen that can be picked up without a lone pair of electrons. So we're not talking about picking up a hydride here. We're talking about that oxygen atom needs to pick up a proton. It needs to pick up a hydrogen without a lone pair of electrons associated with it. So we look at what's available in the reaction mixture. And I'd mentioned that we had methanol in the reaction mixture and alcohol. So that has that oxygen bonded to our hydrogen. So it's, an it's a hydrogen bonded to a heteroatom. Those tend to be relatively good proton donors. So what we will do is we'll take our methanol molecule, MeOH, we'll use that as our acid, having the oxygen anion act as the base to grab that proton from methanol, which we would define as the acid, and that will finish off our reaction, converting our starting material, aldehyde or ketone, into our final product, which is going to be an alcohol. So you'd have CH2 here at the end from that. That carbon is directly bonded to an OH group and directly bonded to CH2, CH3 to finish off this reduction reaction. So what you'll notice here, if we didn't want to write out the whole mechanism for this, all that we've done in this process is we've converted the carbonyl group from our aldehyde or ketone into a hydroxy group. So we've got a carbonyl group gets converted into a hydroxy group. So that's what you can keep in mind if you're just aiming to draw the reaction product without making a full mechanism, is just take the carbonyl group, convert it into a hydroxy group, and you are done. So the reaction with lithium aluminum hydride would go about similarly, except for one caveat. And that caveat is that sodium borohydride is considerably more reactive and less stable than lithium, than Sodium borohydride is considerably more stable than lithium aluminum hydride. And so what will happen is if we take lithium aluminum hydride and do the same reaction, in order to make this work out, we'll have to take our lithium aluminum hydride. It reacts violently with water, so we have to protect it from water. So we want to use a solvent that is aprotic. And it reacts with water rather rapidly and violently because it is so much less stable than sodium borohydride. So you got the lithium aluminum hydride in an aprotic solvent, let that reaction take place completely, and that's going to give way to the anion, oxygen anion intermediate that we saw up here. And then from there, what's going to happen is that after that reaction is finished up, we're gonna adjust the pH by reducing the pH downward to a more neutral, less basic pH, so we could reduce the pH to, say, 7. And then what's going to happen is that the oxygen anion will pick up a proton to become an OH group. So the key difference here between using sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride is just that in the case of lithium aluminum hydride, be prepared that you have to protect the lithium aluminum hydride from water, and then that implies that you're going to have to do the pH adjustment as a second step, reducing the pH to less than seven to enable that proton to be installed on the oxygen. To recap the concepts from this unit, we're going to make a table to summarize the reducing agents that we've just talked about. So first off, sodium borohydride, we're gonna fill in each of the boxes here with a yes, no response to indicate whether or not the sodium borohydride is able to reduce an aldehyde, a ketone, a carbon-carbon triple bond, or a carbon-carbon double bond. That should be a carbon-carbon double bond here, not a carbon-oxygen double bond. So can it reduce an alkene group, in other words? So going through this list here, first off, sodium borohydride can definitely reduce an aldehyde, and it can definitely reduce a ketone. Aldehydes and ketones are gonna react generally very, very similarly because the only difference is one carbon-carbon bond versus a carbon-hydrogen bond, which tend to behave pretty analogously in most of the reactions we'll look at. Sodium borohydride will not reduce alkynes, 
nor will it reduce alkenes. So if you want to selectively reduce just the aldehyde and ketone groups, sodium borohydride is a good way to go. Lithium aluminum hydride is going to react similarly to sodium borohydride, except that it's a stronger reducing agent, so you have to protect it from water when it is actually doing its reduction reactions. And so it will reduce aldehydes, will reduce ketones. It will not reduce carbon-carbon triple bonds or carbon-carbon double bonds due to the mode of action that it is taking there. The fact that it's using a hydride that's a nucleophile, it needs to be able to attack a really electrophilic atom. And aldehydes and ketones have an electrophilic carbon available. That is the carbonyl carbon. Carbon-carbon double bonds and carbon-carbon triple bonds don't have that electrophilic carbon that they need. Um, on the other hand, when we look at H2 and metal catalyst, H2 and metal catalyst is going to be our general worker here. It can reduce a variety of different types of pi bonds, be those the carbon-oxygen double bond of aldehydes or ketones, or the carbon-carbon triple bond of alkynes, or the carbon-carbon double bond of alkenes. It does all of that. So that's going to be our summary of our reducing agents. In the next unit, what we'll take a look at is use of these reducing agents on esters and to see if they will be suitable for reducing those types of molecules. So stay tuned for that.